Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you render normalization in Reaper. So I have a project in front of me here, and I want to render a final mix of it. So we go up here to the file menu and choose render. Or we could use the keyboard shortcut on PC, it's all control R, and on Mac, it's option command R. Choose it, and it opens up the render dialog. And we could choose to render the master mix, the entire project, where we're going to render it to, give it a name, our sample rate, make it stereo, and the type of file we want to render. I'll do a wave 24 bit. And if we render the file right here, here's our rendered waveform with the stats for that render over here. As we can see, it's not clipping. Our peak is minus 1.5, and the WAFS value, or the perceived loudness of the mix, is minus 14.9. Let's say we're in a situation where a mastering engineer or the client wants 3 dB of headroom. Right here, we can achieve that. With normalization. Let's go back and choose this button right here normalize or limit. Open it up and right over here, we can choose to normalize our render. And it can be based on many different targets. In this situation, we'd want to choose either peak or true peak. The peak value tells us the peak amplitude at the current point in time, while true peak is intended to estimate the highest level the signal could reach after resampling at any sample rate. It's a more conservative value if you're going to do any sample rate converting. But let's just choose peak. And then we'll change this to minus 3 because we want 3 dB of headroom in our render. And choose this here, close it, and now if we render the file, it renders it, it readjusts our master by this value, and the final file has minus three headroom, which is what we wanted. And we could set this to any value we want. Let's say we wanted to make our mix as loud as possible. We could set this to zero, although I usually like to set this to negative 0 0.3, to just give a little headroom. And if we render it now, it's set to exactly that value with no clipping and showing how it was adjusted to get to that target. But we could also use other values, like our LUFs, which again is the perceived loudness of the signal. So let's go back to this and change it from peak to LUFs I, or integrated. We could change this to any value we need. Let's say we're streaming to Spotify, at this point, the preferred target is minus 14 LUFs. So we could change this right here to minus 14. But keep in mind, if we go too hot, it could clip the master. So let's try it. It renders our mix and normalizes it so our target is minus 14 LUFs. Like I said, perfect for a streaming service like Spotify. But make sure there's no clipping, which there's not. But let's say we wanted to go hotter or louder. If we change this to minus nine, again, we might get clipping if we try to make this too hot or too loud. Let's try it. And we can see a whole bunch of clipping in our render. So if we need this target, this is not the best way to do it. Instead, I recommend going to your master track, go to the effects on that track, maybe have a compressor or a limiter, and adjust those using the loudness meter to get the LUFS level you want, as opposed to doing it in the render window. But let's say we want a more conservative loudness, maybe minus 12. Let's try that. And notice. This still clips, but just a bit, just 33 samples. 
So for this, we might want to use the limiting function. Right over here, the brick wall limit, we could choose this as a peak or a true peak to bring it up to get to this target without clipping by adding some limiting or a brick wall limiter. So let's try this. And now it normalizes it to this value, but also limited it with a brick wall limiter to reduce any clipping. And because it's only a few samples, it shouldn't change the sound dramatically, although you should check it to make sure. But let's say you're in a situation where you're rendering your final mix and it just goes over a few dB with a few samples clipping. We could also use the limiter for this. Just turn it on for peak or true peak and try it again. And now it reduced that clipping with the brick wall limiter. But once again, you should check it to make sure you're okay with that sound. But with just a few samples, it should be okay. But now let's say we want to render some stems. Instead of a master mix right here, just choose all the tracks we want. And we can render four stems from here. Notice. None of them are clipping, and our peaks are right here. But if we want our stems to be normalized, we could do that as well. Just go here, choose normalize, and choose the target we want to hit. Maybe peaks, negative 0.3. And if we choose this option right here, it's going to normalize each stem separately, like this. See right here? Each stem peaks at the same value, which isn't what you'd want to do if you want to use these stems to recreate your mix later. But if you want to treat each stem separately, this is how we do it. But we could also choose this option, which is going to normalize based on the master mix, common gain to the stems. So, for example, let's leave this like this. Let's choose the master mix and stems. And using this as a target, we could choose to normalize or limit the master mix with common gain to stems, which will raise or lower the level of all the stems equally based on the level of the master mix. So if you wanted to recreate this mix using the stems later, this would be the option to choose. As we could see, right here. Our master is now minus 0.3, but the other stems are raised the same amount relative to each other. So if you wanted to recreate this mix using the stems later, this would be the option to choose. So that's pretty much it. That's render normalization in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Okay, Pilgrim. Mm -hmm.